With Virgin Media, you can build up the entertainment and tear down the price. Switch to Virgin Media today and get super fast broadband and TV for just 49 euro a month for an awesome 12 months. The sale that stacks up. Now on. See virginmedia.ie and check out how our mobile sales stacks up too. T's and C's apply. See virginmedia.ie. 12 month contract. Offer ends 27th of February 2019. Hi guys, well from Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast, I'm Frank Feldman, and I'm Dan Beecher, and coming up today, well, it's been six years, Dan, yeah, this is, uh, this is our anniversary-ish, sort of, a red, the, no, it's six years, yeah, it's been, it's been six years, we've done six years of this crap, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to be discussing uh, what, yeah, what, what, what we've what we've gone through what in those six learned. Years. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna talk about us a little Error, bit. Our regrets and grievances. Ex- grievances. <laughs> er, the errands of grievances will be, and it's mostly about you, listeners. <laughs> we have grievances about you. Stay tuned because we might mention you by name with all your listening, all your. Paying attention, Why are you listening, and supporting, and being sweet and awesome and stuff. <laughs> ha! We'll take but, you down a peg. Anyway, before that, we got to do the our first half of the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan, yes, sir. Uh, the Vatican. I've heard of that. They run a duty-free shop. Okay. As you would. You're a sovereign nation. Heck yeah. Why not? Right. If you live in Rome, do you always just go to the Vatican so that you can get? Cheap booze and cheap cologne or whatever you get duty free. Cheap cigarettes. Oh, this is a story of cigarettes. Oh, Dan. okay. Uh, and the fact that the uh, the Pope, or I guess I should say the Vatican, the Holy See, <laughs> uh, has uh, issued a statement that they will no longer be selling cigarettes at their duty free shop. Oh, which used to bring in roughly ten million dollars a year. Holy shit! Oh, I'm sorry, ten ten million euro. Holy, that'd be eleven million dollars a year. Damn. Yeah, they are losing. I mean, Italians like they're smoking. Yeah, but the Pope says, uh, uh, let's see, the or the official statement said, uh, the Holy See cannot contribute to an activity that clearly damages the health of people. Huh. So there's that. I applaud this move, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but they, they are giving up a major source of revenue. Yeah. Uh, the, they're uh, going to replace it with cocaine. <laughs> another major source of revenue for the uh, Vatican City State uh, is the, um, uh, the or, I'm sorry, tax-free gas sales. Oh. So people are able to pop over to just drive the Vatican in. gas station. Oh, that one! That one's a and get tax-free gas. Hey, if you're in the neighborhood, so you might as well. Uh, but here's the deal: they just gave up on cigarettes. What about? I mean, electric vehicles are coming in strong, folks. Like oh. they're about to lose out on on two major sources of revenue. They're gonna have supercharging stations <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah. all around the wall. Yeah, the Vatican wall. You can just drive past and it'll meow 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 charge up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, the, that's the uh, sound, that's the sound that charging a car, an electric car, meow, makes, meow, right? Meow, yeah, meow 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 meow, <laughs> and then you're charged, and then you can go. I don't think that's true, Dan. I think Tesla needs to work on a sound, a signature sound for charging. Yeah, just something nice and soothing. Does it not currently have a sound? Not that I'm aware Does of. Have, but do like a little sing songy bling bling bling. Bling 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 bling. I should know more. Mid 2018. Charging, charging, charging. <laughs> charging, charging, charging. Right. Yeah. Or that's, it's just that's Elon Musk. It's just Elon on. Musk awkwardly giving a keynote speech. <laughs> <laughs> I like the guy a lot. He cannot speak publicly. <laughs> He's not very good. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move us along to uh, from from the Vatican. To Alabama. 
Yeah? Uh yes. Uh we've all we've all heard about the whole Roy Moore kerfuffle by now. Uh not a good thing uh for those who aren't in the know. You may not you may remember Roy Moore's name because you, Frank and I have talked about Mr. Moore many uh, times repeatedly because uh, he warrants discussion on this because show. Because he's a loon ball. Yeah. And Alabama keeps electing him to shit. Yeah. Even like, after being removed from office. Twice. Yeah. He was chief justice of the Supreme Court. Yes. And he broke the law and they removed him from office. And then they reelected him to chief, chief justice again. Again. He broke the law again. The first time was for the, the, the ins- his insistence of putting the, uh, the Ten Commandments right. in the courthouse. The second time was for his... his insistence that no one in alabama apparently had to follow the law regarding gay marriage right well he is the chief justice he was removed from the court by higher courts by by federal courts or whatever and then he now he's running for senate in in a special election Uh, and now he might be removed from the race he might be well he might be we'll see but (laughs) i mean gets elected he'll be removed from office again maybe i mean he's Uh, been so so he was uh he was accused by multiple women of just horrific things uh a 14 year old uh accused him of or a woman who is now no longer 14 but was at the time 14 accused said he that he he, as a 30-some-odd-year-old, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, touched her all kinds of inappropriately, yeah. kissed her, yeah. basically tried to be romantic with a child. Yeah. That's not yeah. remotely okay. Well, a new poll has come out in Alabama. Oh? Uh, they've polled Bammons <laughs> to see how they feel now that, now, that the, uh, now that the word is out on more. Right, right. Of evangelicals in Alabama... 37% surveyed said that these allegations made them more likely to vote for Roy Moore. What? 37%. Wow. Of evangelicals. That's fucked up. That is... More likely? More likely. Not just, well, I'm still voting for him because... No. Now it's like... Now I gotta vote for him. I like that fourteen-year-old touching. I just I like what is it? I support this. You know, this except is one of those... for the fact that in their head, this is all a vast conspiracy to tear down. Well, what's amazing the people is... that they like and that they support. What's, and... what's amazing is that they say they say two things at the same time. They say it's a conspiracy. She's lying. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what Falwell said. Falwell Jr., Jerry Falwell Jr., said, it comes down to a question of who is more credible in the eyes of the voters, the candidate or the accuser. The same thing happened to President Trump a few weeks before his election last year, except it was several wi- several women making allegations. He denied that any of them were true, and the American people believed him and elected him the 45th president of the United States. I don't know. Did the American people really believe him? I guess. I mean, it, I don't think... I- it seems this is all very, very strange to me. But like at the same time that they're saying, I don't believe her, she's lying or whatever. And by the way, this was multiple women corroborated yeah. extensively by the Washington Post. The Washington right. Post like talked to hun- like dozens of people surrounding this whole thing. So it's true. It happened. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, even like people who worked with him back in the day. Yeah. Uh, we're like, yeah, we knew he was up to this kind of stuff, that he dated young girls. We thought it was weird. I'm like, weird? Weird? No, that's it's flat out wrong. He's a DA. Yeah. And he's committing crimes. And Yeah. But apparently not. In Alabama, it's like a air quotes crime. <laughs> it's like a, it's a, I mean, it's a, because then you've got people defending <laughs> well, him it's saying. tradition more than anything. Well, you got the people right. who are defending him who are saying, uh, you know, who are saying, well, Mary was, was a teen, was a young teenager when Joseph married her and blah, blah, blah. Right. Which like the whole point of their thing was that it wasn't even sexual. So like, right. Uh, well, but, but, but no, no, no. But God fucked Mary. God. 
you know what? You know? If fucking a teenager is good enough for God, <laughs> then it should be good enough for Roy Moore. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, He's I, just following God's footsteps. I mean, God did, God did that. But you Although know, they don't. He, they don't. Believe but my that. thing That's is, Mormons. you can't have it both ways. Either right. it's not true, right. and you don't have to address the right or wrongness of it, right. or it is true, right. and you have to sort of sort yourself through that. Either way, the fact that anyone's like defending this guy. Right. No, I mean, even his own defense, things that he has said in his own defense lead me to believe that it's 100 percent true he's he when questioning sort of the legitimacy of these claims he goes well why would these women come come forward or why have these women come forward 40 years later <laughs> right which means he's there was no question in his voice it was like it was the intention of the women not the whether or not it actually happened right right i guess i so i guess i, I mean here's the thing Human beings, in general, suck. Yeah. We're just shitty. We're bad at humaning. And when we lock down on a tribe, when we say, this is our tribe, this is what we do, this is, these are my people, and then one of them does something horrific, a lot of people are very loath to let go of that. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like everybody's just doubling down on the guy. Right. Because, you know, he fights for Christian values. Who it's, else we got? It's like, you know, that is, who else could we possibly send to, to the Senate to, to represent us? How about anybody who doesn't molest children? <laughs> anybody. Even Mitt Romney, like, totally turned his back on this guy. Like, Mitt, I believe it's, that. Mitt yeah. is normally a pretty decent guy. Mitt Romney tweeted, innocent until proven guilty is for criminal convictions, not elections. I believe Lee Kaufman, Korfman, I, I think that's the accuser. Okay. Uh, her account is too serious to ignore. Moore is unfit for office and should step aside. Yeah. That's Mittens J. Romney the third. He's <laughs> he's a he's a dyed in the wool Republican. But at least yeah, he's but, but at he's, least he's reasonable. He's reasonable. He's not one of these evangelical crazies. Right. The evangelicals are nuts. Well, he'd probably be crazy about his more sort of mainstream. Well, he's got republicanism. Like he's got his own brand. His he's got his own brand of crazy, death. right? But like, but it's not. And that. he doesn't like these guys. And let's also make that oh, that's really true. clear. Mitt doesn't like this far this right extremist side of the Republican Party. Yeah. He's an establishment Republican. They are off the he's, cliff. He's a, he's a different brand than these they're, lunatics. They're, it's madness in Alabama. Yeah. yeah, listener, are you in Alabama? Get out. We know get some out, of you are. Get out while you can. <laughs> well, that's often not an option. We might just but, have to fence you off. Like, our only option may be that we have to... That's where we're putting up the fence, is Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they elect Roy Moore... Oh, my God. Anyway. Don't, he's, not, he's currently not ahead in the polls, so that's good. But the overall polls. Only yeah. by a little bit. Yeah. So, that's scary. That's really interesting. All right, Dan. Mm. Tennessee... Jefferson City, Tennessee, home of the uh, First Baptist Church of Jefferson City, yeah, has hired a woman as its lead pastor. Okay. This is a um, – they're part of the Southern Baptist sort of which, brand of Which baptism. really kind of doesn't do the woman pastor thing. They do not. In fact, officially, uh, they only men – can pastor a congregation oh and that's a that's like a in in the rule books this is in the rule rule books oh wow um there's the tennessee baptist convention of which the first baptist church of jefferson city is a part oh. uh and they are so they subscribe to the whole southern baptist thingy majiggy not sure entirely how all of this works right uh however uh the now that they have appointed or hired rather uh, Reverend Ellen D. Giosia, as its senior pastor, uh, they are going to lose their voting rights in the the, the Tennessee Baptist Convention. Oh my God! Uh, the Tennessee Baptist Convention is not happy with them. <laughs> they they state clearly that while they uphold the rights of the of the local churches to uh, govern their denomination their their 
congregation as they as they wish, there are certain things that they really just cannot allow. And this is one of them. Well, they cannot associate. They don't even know the the, the poor folks at the uh, Jefferson City or the First Baptist Church of Jefferson City don't even know if they're going to have a seat at the table at the next convention. Um, I mean, and they're all very sad because they just they just really liked this pastor and they hired her. But That's they, they so had to weird. know that there would be consequences. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. they n- they're in a denomination where nobody does this, and then right. they're like, "We're just going to do this thing." Right? What did they think would happen? I don't know. I think they thought. And that why maybe... are they doing it? Like, it doesn't. I mean, do, what's special about Jefferson City? Ten- is that what it is? Yeah, I had to look up Jefferson City. It's not. It, it's part of like some other metropolitan area that. I have never even really heard of like when something some something I I I don't the name didn't even huh. stick. It's not like it's part of like you know the um Nashville metropolitan area or something and there's some little liberal enclave, enclave with their Southern Baptist Church, right? Right. Like this is it's a Jefferson City apparently is a town of about 8,000 people. Huh. Well, how do you how do you like that? I know that's like, that's nutty that they would just that they're just like yeah we want a we want a lady pastor now. <laughs> Here's what here I I believe that they are forgetting First Corinthians. However, what is First Corinthians? Saint Paul's epistle to the Corinthians, in which he said in chapter fourteen, verse thirty four, that women should remain silent in the churches. Oh yeah, they that's are important. not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. I think pretty much all Baptists have forgotten that one. Not well, no, just these. I think I think because women are they can get up and and holler, they can, they can talk, ho- hoot and holler. <laughs> right. I, I just can't pass. I'll bet you that there they can't be the lead pastor. I'll bet you there are plenty of churches in the South where women it, are it, where it's considered unfor, untoward for a woman to shut talk. up, woman. Damn it, woman! <laughs> I'm not even going to bring you to church. You keep doing that talking go back home and make me a dinner thinking you have a voice thinking you have something to say uh, there's a man talking now <laughs> oh my gosh yeah but well, i say kudos to them they did something risky yeah you know i think that's kind of amazing like yeah. who the fuck are these people out of the woodwork i, I like it i want to go visit <laughs> I want to go there. You probably wouldn't like much of anything they have to say. That's true. My guess is. And they would not like me. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe they would. Who if knows? this is what they're doing, if that's what they're up to, they're they're hiring women to be their pastor, uh, going against everything their whole denomination says. Like the one thing that would get them kicked out. Yeah. Apparently. No, well, I mean, what, one of What's next? Things, but... They're going to like be okay with their gay kids? No. No. No, that, no, no, that, no. Does, that does seem silly. She's the biggest homophobe in the world. <laughs> I'm sure she is. <laughs> Maybe that's what got her hired. She's, she's like, look. The most vitriolic, hateful woman. I heard your current pastor say something nice about gay people. I want them stoned to death, so uh, you might want me. Yeah. They're like, hired. Sold. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, hey, have you heard of the United States House of Representatives? Uh, unfortunately. Uh, did you know that? One of them, one of them has actually admitted to being a humanist. Oh, oh, hey, uh, you you, house representative of out of California, Jared Huffman has actually come out and now he's been in, he's been in for a while. Yeah. And every, you know, and you know, these different organizations send out questionnaires to all of the, yeah. Oh yeah, the reps that are it's really just important. Like, let us know who you are. Tell us right. a, your your view on this and your view on that and blah blah blah. Should we support you or not? And one of them is uh, always, you know, what's your religious persuasion? <laughs> uh, to which he has always declined an answer. Oh, uh, he's either he's either said, you know, it's none of your business, or it's not, you know, I don't I don't talk about that, or you know, other or whatever. Uh, yeah, sp- unspecified or declined to state or whatever. Uh, apparently, he is now coming out as a humanist, which 
is like, you know, that's that's saying atheist without actually using the big scary word. Yeah. The big scary A word. Uh which is so funny. He literally he literally said uh that he didn't want to say uh atheist because and this this hurts actually. He well, let me find the quote. He said uh the he said atheist offers a level of certainty he doesn't feel and perhaps arrogance. Ah uh. People, this is not what atheist means. <laughs> atheist does not mean certainty. It just means you don't have a belief in a god. Right. Okay. That's all right. But you're, you're just, you can be certain. You can be that you have that. You don't have a belief. You can be certain <laughs> that you don't have a belief, and you can be pretty. And you can be arrogant about that certainty. Plenty of plenty of atheists are very arrogant okay. about about their atheism that's not a wise uh position to take in my in my view but you know plenty of people are but that's it's not inherent to the word anyway Hmm. it's a scary word and it it's certainly not a word that plays with uh voters well right right right, right. uh so i understand him not using it but yeah he's come out as a humanist and that's cool yeah he says i'm not hostile to religion and i'm not judging other people's religious views of course he had to say that this is the guy uh, back on in 2014. I don't know if you'll recall this, but he went. Uh, he, Colbert had him on his show. He would, it was like a meet a uh, uh, congressperson sort right. of segment, uh-huh. and Colbert actually asked him. So he said, Colbert said, "Unspecified? Come on, grow a pair. What is it? Are you atheist?" And he said, <laughs> "I don't know. Agnostic? Then perhaps." Ah, Col- and then Colbert just looked down at his uh, at his. A little pad, pad, and he said, "I'll just put you down for heathen, heathen slash hellbound." <laughs> Fantastic! There you go. We got us a heathen slash hell, hellbound one guy, and he was, and and the thing is that he's he's talking about how he he thinks that there should be some separation between the state, no, and the church, no, no, yeah, yeah, no. He well, says he says he's not I, long for this. I think there's too much religion in politics. Body. For yeah. those reasons, I feel good about not answering these questions. Uh, the yeah, he's very clear that he doesn't like how religion is used in politics, right. and that's good. Also, his constituency is like San Francisco, and oh, I don't know, and north of there. <laughs> I think he's okay. Whatever. I think he'll be safe. Maybe. The question really is, do you do you like wine? <laughs> right. You better answer yes. You better answer yes. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the religion of that area. <laughs> All right, Dan, have you ever heard of the Costume Institute? No. No. <laughs> no, I have not. At the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh. oh. They, uh, they do exhibits of, of featuring fashion. Oh, okay. Sure. Right? Uh, there's currently, uh, or there there's the... Uh, recently opened, or fairly recently opened, Anna Winter Costume Center. Oh. Uh, and they do... Where everyone dresses up as Anna Winter? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, costume is a weird word. When it's people's actual clothing, yeah, it's weird to call it a costume. Indeed. Uh, however... Although your costume looks very nice today. Oh, thank you. You're, you're, and, and back right back at you, Dan. Oh, we're yeah. very... You you're, can go to our YouTube channel. We're all very... We're very handsome. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so there is a new, the, the, the 2018 fashion exhibition sure will be entitled heavenly bodies. Oh my fashion and the Catholic imagination. Oh dear. And so the, what they're doing is they're, they're finding pieces of high fashion examples that have been. Oh, used religious like, art like Benedict's their... Gu- Gucci shoes or whatever. No, 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 no. So actually, like high fashion dresses and uh, sort of you know. Well, actually, the pictures are mostly dresses. Yeah. Um, this one is kind of a cloak, right? And they're based off of paintings or oh. other religious relics or stained glass windows or whatever so the so the designer found their inspiration in catholicism they're they're looking for at these pieces of of like haute couture they're looking at like the go- the huge ornate gown worn by pope pius the 4th exactly and right? going oh i could i could repurpose that for this and i could right. just 
And so, like, this, this, this <laughs> one example is um, an El Greco. Oh, it's yeah. It's a portrait of uh, uh, Cardinal Fernando Nino de Guevara from about the 1600s. And he's seated in one of those throny things. Uh huh. And he's just got, you know, very sort of what you would expect very roby, satiny um, uh, robes. Sure. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> On. And next to it, they have a picture of a uh, an evening coat. Uh, uh, Cristobal Balenciaga. Balenciaga? Even, Balenciaga. Uh, evening coat from the 1950s. Right? Yeah. And so, and so but what, what they're doing is they're putting these side by side. And a lot of they also do have a lot of pieces on loan from the Vatican, huh. which are more sort of where you were going, right? Where they actually do have the 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 the, the papal vestitures and whatnot, and mm. things that cardinals have worn and whatnot, as examples of. But they're not. But they're with those pieces because they're actually in sort of active religious use. They're right. keeping those kind of separate in its own areas to to not draw too many similarities. <laughs> and, I mean, <laughs> there's, comparisons there's with high fashion, and then there's high holy fashion. Oh yeah, indeed. indeed. I, it, it does want make it does uh, make one wonder when the uh, the highest reaches of the fashion world are going to finally start being inspired by those hats, right? Those oh. very tall, like you know, I want to see women in very tall mitered hats. <laughs> <laughs> the- <laughs> Who knows? Beautiful things, yeah. Who knows? It might be possible, but I mean, uh, all of the, I mean, Versace, um, Dolce and Gabbana, uh, obviously, probably a lot of the Italians in general, uh, fashion designers. I mean, these these folks grew up with this is the the imagery around them. If you go to anywhere in Italy, what are you going to see? You're going to see paintings of uh, of Catholic popes, and and like these were the most these were the wealthiest men. In the world. Right. They had the finest of all the everythings. Yes. So, yeah, that's where that's where you're going to see all the amazing textiles and all right. the amazing things. Um, this this ex- ex- exhibit is being... Uh, they, they People feel that it is quite risky for some odd reason. I'm not quite sure. They, 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 risky? There could be... Well, that it could draw some real criticism oh, from well. religious types. All right. And, you know, people are... Are sensitive to that. Well, for you know, whatever I'll tell you who it should, who should be who should be mad about it. Right. All of the uh, the Orthodox Christians, like where's our shit? <laughs> where you know maybe maybe where are the you know where are the Jewish inspired? Right. Outfits. W- w- when are designers going to look to Mormonism for when uh, for high fashion? When are they going? When does Balenciaga come out with the uh, t-shirt under tank top look? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> Expand your horizons, Cristobal. Come on. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take us. So uh, you're aware, I, I, I assume, of the Leah Remini Scientology and the Aftermath TV show that happened. No. No? This is a TV show that, that Leah Remini, actress Leah Remini, who was on The King oh. of Queens. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She did a, sort of an expose about her former religion, Scientology. Oh, okay. And how, and, and like did a big series wow. about, about it and about how it has negatively affected her and other people oh, and wow. how they like, yeah. you know, if you leave, they, per, they, they harass and blah, blah, blah. I haven't oh. seen the show. I want to see the show. Okay, but you know we've both read plenty on on uh, on Scientology, and we've seen documentaries about it, that sort of thing. Right. Uh, so apparently, Ms. Remini uh, has been in contact with a uh, a Trump family friend and a top official of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, who is Lynn Patton, ah. who has been apparently like. Direct messaging on Twitter with Leah Remini, and has assured her that Trump is interested in removing uh, Scientology's tax exempt status. Uh, interesting. Okay. 
Ms. Pa- she- Ms. Patton said in a tweet, uh, in a in a in a private tweet, I guess. Uh, From the moment I saw your series, I told President Trump and his family we needed to revoke their tax exempt status. They couldn't agree more, but please don't publicize that yet. But she tweeted it. No, I think somehow somehow Huffington Post got their hands on this. Ah, okay. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apparently, she said, uh, "I look forward to doing my part." To oh wait, no, this is is this Remini? Uh, no, this is Patton saying, "I look forward to doing my part to help out to help put an end to this ongoing nightmare and blatant misuse of our IRS rules and regulations." <laughs> I want to do more to more research on Scientology's history with the IRS to date so that I can better understand what tactics have been applied and where we can pick up. Now, it is true that the the Scientology literally bullied the IRS right. into giving them tax exempt, exempt status. Right. The IRS was not going to do it. Right. And then like ev like Scientology basically as an organization encouraged all of their members to file a lawsuit all at the same time. Right. And it would have cost billions of dollars for the IRS to process all of these lawsuits. Right. So instead, they just said, oh, fine, you get to have it. <sighs> Which is amazing that our U.S. government is that easily just bullied. That's just bullying. That's not anything. There's nothing legitimate about that. I, my personal belief is, Either they're a religion or they're not, and they look like one to me. So yeah. I feel like they should be treated like the other religions, personally. I feel like all of the religions should be under a lot more scrutiny than they are. But I don't... And and they are and they commit crimes, so maybe they need to like be taken down, not by the IRS. How about by the FBI? Right. How about for the actual crimes that they commit? But fuck all that. It is inter- what's really interesting about this to me is that the White House can't do that. <laughs> they can't put pressure on the IRS to look into a specific organization and determine this thing. Apparently, uh, according to Larry Noble, who's a, a, a general counsel, a former general counsel for the Federal Election Commission, mm-hmm. um, that the HuffPo talked to about this, he said, "quote." For the White House or any administration official to try and influence who the IRS targets for whatever reason is wrong and could result in a violation of the law. Oh, then let's have them do it. Right? <laughs> Go for it, Trumpy boy. Shh. Don't don't Shh. let some Stop egghead him. Don't no no, don't let some egghead lawyer tell what tell you what you can do. Right. You get out there and you do it, partner. Yeah. I mean, it's a win-win. I would love for Scientology to lose their tax-exempt right. status. And I would love for Trump to break the law yet again and maybe expose himself to impeachment. Uh, yeah. I wonder... Uh, yeah. I mean, the religious... How hypocritical would the uh, religious right be if he did start going after Scientology? Oh, my God. Like... I mean, it's... It, because at the end of the day, they should be they should be concerned about any religious organization losing its its status they should have that concern the religious right? the religious right should yeah because but there's that gentleman's should, agreement between all the religions right. that it's just like we will all wink at each other i don't care how kooky you are right i need religion to be to to keep its its privileged place in society right. but the, the 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 other part of it is they should be absolutely fucking outraged that scientology acts in the name of religion right all of it is well is Scienti- I mean Scientology as an organization does a lot more like really sinister shit than most religions. Yeah. But like there's plenty of Christian religions where all the sinister shit in the world is happening. Right. So it's not so it's like is it really any worse? Right. That's, is it really that's any why they would, they would probably just end up being a bunch of fucking you know. Yeah. Hypocrites on the whole thing. Yeah. They all, I mean, that's kind of what they do. I mean, the Catholic church should probably lose. Like they should all be, you know, when you, when you protect pedophiles, yeah. nope, you should lose it. You should lose yeah. your tax exempt status when you, you know, any, it should really, you should almost have to like, there should be an annual re- renewal 
There should be or like a five year review process. Yeah. You don't just get it fucking keep it. You're right. You should be working toward the common good. That's why we give it to you. You're right. Right? Yeah. Granted, we probably should give it to them at all. But if you're going to hold show, their feet to the fire, yeah, make show them us, actually be good organizations. Right. Rather than just doling it out. No. That's not But they happen. just get it. All right. Well, uh, you know, if you guys have anything that you'd like to say on the matter, you can write to us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you could call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Indeed. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click the like button. And while on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Request to join. It is a closed group, but we'll let you in. We will indeed. Dan? Yeah. It's been six years. Holy cow, you guys. Six I'm, years. I'm looking directly into camera because I'm I'm trying to uh I'm Connect. trying to invite our listeners slash viewers into this moment <gasps> with us. Oh. Uh we've been doing this for in podcasting years. That's quite a long time, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is. There's a is... lot of podcasts come and go. And a lot um, of yeah. I, I mean there, there were there are plenty that have real staying power. There were there yeah. were around before we uh, tenacious yeah sure the hosts are tenacious yeah we've we've shown a little tenacity I think we have I think so I uh, somehow I don't I don't I don't know how we did it <laughs> considering who we are <laughs> but we seem to have done it we seem we're to still have, here we seem to have uh, shown that bit of tenacity yeah. I'm pulling up right now I'm pulling up our back catalog I'm just oh gonna my. I'm just looking at it. It's not even all there. There's so much that so much. iTunes won't even host all of it. They're which rude. Is weird to me. They're rude that way. Uh, we'd have to actually pull up off of the TGIA archive drive. Yeah. The uh, the original episodes. Yeah, which we've got somewhere. Oh, well, I know right where it is. Oh, well, you house. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're a uh, no big mystery. Yeah, exactly. Over 300 episodes. Uh, well over 300. We're just we're just. Yeah clicking away yeah it's a thing yeah uh let, let, should we go back in the way back machine and remember some early times i re- i remember our first show yeah there we were uh we were not we were at uh your former place of business which was a media out a media uh school right uh because you and I didn't own any of the equipment no at and that point to be honest i didn't want to spend a dime on it because <laughs> <laughs> like, me neither <laughs> like, we were like how do we do is this gonna work are we actually okay we say we're gonna do it every week but are we really gonna yeah. do it every week i don't think either of us trusted that this thing would work at right. all and i think you showed up to work it was probably like a thursday it was a tuesday or a thursday because i was working late mm-hmm. and we uh we just yeah f- found a room well, we went into the recording we studio. Into, oh, that's right. We, we, we set up in the recording right. studio. I believe I probably started like a Pro Tools session, uh-huh. right? <laughs> like way overkill. Right. And then we kind of settled in and scaled down and did the right thing later on. But yeah, like we had the, we, we were using fancy mics. And, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Fancier mics. Like we had much higher end equipment. The first episode we recorded than we have now. Right. But we also discovered that we didn't need that stuff. Right. What we discovered is we can get the sound that we want. Right. From from less. Right. The quality of our voices will shine through. We're not singing here. We're not. Little, we're not. This is. Yeah. This, we're not recording a, an instrument. Right. You know, because a lot of that stuff. Well, I mean, we were using vocal mics, but again, very different setting. Yeah. Like we were in a, a controlled space that was acoustically pretty decent yeah not a lot of background noise getting in there so. yeah 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 really uh nice closed off yeah thing it was good it was a good time and we did that for probably what, four or five months yeah a while it, it was we got kicked out fairly <laughs> we did get fairly out. early on um and then decided and my and then- boss was actually kind enough to pull a couple mics out of his own personal collection he felt bad at, he right I know he wasn't the one who kicked us out. Right. And he, because he felt bad about the whole thing. 
and uh and he lent us some some gear and there was probably somewhere around there that we bought our first recorder yeah uh actually it's still the same recorder actually still. yeah well we were recording directly no no, no, no. we recorded we, into our laptops we were recording into laptops for, for the longest right. time that's right that's this, uh, right man we did, and then and then there was the time that I ran away to London for six weeks. And we had to figure that one out. We did, so we had to record over oh, transatlantically. Yeah, I went and I remember, I was so pleased. I scored that interview with the Bishop of London. Yeah, that was. That's probably when we bought the the recorder, the Tascam. Is it? Cause, because no, because I, cause no, I was you recorded your you recorded clean audio over there. Yeah, I was recording into my laptop, I think. Then how were you getting... I don't know. I don't know how we did this shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I was up at, like, 2 in the morning right. in London. Right. Like, sort of tucking myself away from... Like, I'm in a flat that has all of these other students, because I was there sort of on a study abroad, even though I'm old. Uh <laughs> So, like, I'd have to find a place in the flat. There's, It's basically a dorm scenario. There's, you know, seven bedrooms right. full of kids, college kids there. Right. And I have to f- tuck myself away at two in the morning and record with you over right. Skype. Right. Oh, th- those were the days, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and then we did, and then we did our, uh, our road trip through the south. Road trip through the south. That was... That was a good one. That was a couple years in. That wasn't. Uh, yeah, it might have been about two years in. Eighteen right. months, two years. We did it really soon on. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't have a ton of listeners. No, when, when we did it. I mean, we, we had, had we had a we had a good handful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and not that we have millions now. No, but no. like <laughs> we have a, we have a decent audience now. Yeah, well, we have the best audience. <laughs> <laughs> but there are definitely there's audience. definitely more than there used to be, and we uh, yeah the road trip to the south. I, here's what I'm going. Here's the memory I'm going to uh, t- to tell our our listeners about. You and I decided that we would record while we were on the road. It was, we decided we would do videos the whole time, so we did a bunch of videos. Those who have right. been to our YouTube channel can go back and and revisit those videos that we right. made. That so were, a couple of them were pretty fun. They're silly, but fun. <laughs> and then. We decided to record a show, but what you and I decided to do, because we had a schedule, was when we got into my minivan, which was which I had inherited from my dad, so we're driving the, the gold Honda well, Odyssey. Right, but that was not the plan, Dan. We got kicked out of the hotel. The, the, oh. The time, the checkout time at the hotel was way earlier oh, than we yeah. expected it to be. That's right. We were going to record at like 10 in the morning. Right. And they were like, no, checkout time is 10. Or like or 10 some, 30 or, or something. Like, like it, was, re- it was a super early <laughs> yeah, checkout time. Right. And we were like, well, what the hell are we going to do? Because like... <laughs> We're not, we don't. We're not going to a hotel tonight. We were going to my parents' house. Oh, right. Okay, you right? guys. You guys. Here's our solution. This was. This and this is true. We get into the van. We set up mic stands in the van so that there is a mic pointed at my face and a mic pointed at Frank's face. I'm driving, and this the, is all very dangerous. Actually. This is probably highly illegal <laughs> and really stupid. <laughs> And we record as we're driving. Right. And I need to go back and re-listen to that episode. You can, yeah. I mean, if anybody does go back and listen to it, <laughs> you can hear the background of the van. And it, right. I, if you're watching on YouTube, what was happening to me constantly was my mic was just going away, and I just have to pull it. Like if I press the brakes, the mic would just right. The mic kept, just kept swinging away from me, and I just have to pull it back right, to my right, mouth right. and whatever. Well, as and we're driving, you also had some ADHD stuff going on as well, if I remember correctly. You had some squirrel moments. Well, during I the was show. driving a vehicle <laughs> at the time. Then it was we're like, oh look at that horse. Well, we did. I mean, oh, look at that church. I, oh, I look at that car. I was incorporating <laughs> our environment. I mean, if you're driving, if you're going to be driving, and a roadrunner runs across the road. You're yeah. going to talk about that because sure. that's fun. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was, that was nutty. We met some amazing people on that trip. That was, that was actually probably one of the um, seal the deal moments for it was me. Great. As far as like, yeah. because we met so many people uh, that I, I, that's when I really had a sense of um, like 
audience and the sense of the community that was starting to form around the show yeah um and just the good people who were out there who we were connecting with and and that helped me through probably some of the the later moments of like just having this show be a responsibility and just being like i have to continue to fit this into my life yeah and making sure that it stayed enough of a priority that we, we both kept had, coming, that I kept coming back to it every right. week because you know there have been career changes and there have yeah. been like like changes in life changes that have yeah. happened lots of life changes that have happened for us during these during seasons. this yeah. show right and this has been the one constant oh, it really has th- this show has been the job that I've kept for longer than any other job in my <laughs> life <laughs> like if, for me that would be true too isn't yeah. that amazing yeah. Yeah. wow otherwise. Let me think. I mean, the uh, thing my, that, my current job is a is a close second. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but wow, that's uh, that's that's huh. saying something. That is, yeah. Uh, maybe something not great about our personalities. I'm not sure about that. How people change jobs. Dan. People do change jobs. It's true. <laughs> and and you know, I'm, I say that I've been acting professionally for right. Know, 20, and how do you fifteen years or so? But uh, and but like that's a job here and a job there right. and a job here. So like one job does not last that entire exactly time, but... unless you're on like a sitcom, right? Which I'm not. No? Hollywood, Hollywood, no. get your act together. <laughs> Hire me for a sitcom. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I think it's been quite a ride, and and I think you're right. The meeting of people, and we've had several meetups since. Yeah, uh, you guys that we have met are amazing and and one can only assume that those of you that we haven't met that are listening are amazing as well are also would also <laughs> fall into that category um we need to have more meetups we do well I, yeah we we always say that and we do it from time to time mm-hmm. um we, it's, it's you know we have very different schedules yes you and i yes and it true. is hard to sometimes get those schedules to line up so. and also we do live in a in a specific part of the world's geography we just live here we do and it's an isolated place yeah you know there aren't i mean we, salt lake is six hours away from the nearest big city it is it's other true. other big city yeah. yeah uh and so i don't know I, there must be ways we're, we'll we'll need to sort that out hopefully i mean we we're, we're not Showing any signs of slowing down here, people. Right. So hopefully we will get out to more places. We've 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 been to uh, <clears throat> we've been to Texas together. Mm-hmm. Uh, since Louisiana. We've been. Well, I mean, even after the the road trip, we went we went to Texas for the uh, for the podcast convention oh, and saw right. met met yeah, up some people over, right. out there. We've been to. Like, when else did we go to Texas? We went to Wisconsin <laughs> together yeah. and and met up with some amazing people. Yep, out that's there. That's true. Loved, I'd like to go to more places. Wisconsin. You know, uh, I'm going to just throw this out. We throw the, we say this every now and then, but if any of you out there are members of are, are part of a uh, you know a local uh, atheist slash agnostic group or mm. you know a skeptic group or whatever, or you're part of a convention, write to us. Yeah, let's see if we can work something out. We would love to meet. We just you know connecting with you guys has been the most rewarding part of this whole Absolutely. gig. Yep. Uh, and you know, if we've met you, I want to invite you to write to us and tell us how things are going. Yeah. Tell, remind us where we met you, and uh, and let us know how. Yeah, uh, you an know, update would be really nice because we want to hear. Because I mean, some some of these people have been occasionally on my mind. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, I don't remember names, sadly. I don't remember all the names. I remember you know, a few of the names. A few of the names. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's. And I, and and I actually became Facebook friends with a couple people, but sure. not a lot. Right. And I would just like to know more about every, you know, how how people are doing that we've met, and I'd like to meet more people. Right. That's what a wonderful conclusion. <laughs> it's you guys. It's that's what this is. This is for you. Yeah. Uh, we uh, I you know, I want I do want to mention that uh, the thing that will make us getting out more possible mm-hmm. is uh. You know, we we don't push the Patreon thing too hard. No. Some people might think we do, but we don't. And we don't make a lot of money off of... We do run ads. We don't make a lot of money off of them. Next to nothing. The ads are... They're a little bit of revenue. They're a little bit of revenue. But it's not much. Right. Uh, so if if you guys want to help uh, with this mission and get a... You know, if, we, if we're to continue for 
six, another six, six, six more years. years. Uh, it would be great if 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 you could uh, become part of the TGIA family by going to thankgodimatheist.com, clicking on the Patreon uh, button, and that'll take you there. And then literally, it's just like you choose how much you want to give us uh, per episode. You know, a, $1 per episode is an amazing uh, thing, you yeah. know, and you can afford probably four dollars a month most folks can right um if you can't totally fine just go but you know then you can just go to you know itunes or stitcher or wherever you're listening and rate us give us a rating you know a little five-star review is always appreciated that i mean that helps us a lot too yeah um but yeah uh our next our next patreon goal is to get out to you people yeah so so maybe help us reach that we are definitely (laughs) like way below other sort of comparable shows in terms of how much we take in because we're not trying too hard to to do the patreon thing we're not but it would be great right i more than anything i would just like for us to be able to do it to be able to get out to Mm -hmm. to see other people so Mm -hmm. if you want to be a part of that that's how you do it well what do you think frank i think it's been a good six years i think that this has been so it feels uh it feels like a it, it feels it's meaningful to me it's meaningful to me i wouldn't keep doing it if uh, it weren't yeah yeah you know we wouldn't have yeah it's a it's a it's a, an important thing so thank you so much listeners for 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 joining us on this journey yeah it's been uh it's been a great ride absolutely if you uh if you do want to write in to us and let us know uh how you feel about it uh about our show and and if it's meant anything to you that would be amazing. Uh, you can do so by going to by writing to podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and mm-hmm. leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, we'd love that when you do that. Um, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click the like button. That's another way, great way to sort of keep in touch with us and get the word out for us and stuff. Mm-hmm. And while you're there, you might as well search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Request to join. It's a closed group, so we have to let you in, but that's what makes it kind of great. Yeah, speaking, yeah, I mean, when you're talking of, uh, of like, community, yeah, it's a great, it, it is, that is a community. It, right. It's great, so, so definitely do that. Uh, hey, speaking of Facebook, thanks to Mackenzie for her work on our Facebook page, and thanks to Sarah, Amy, and uh, Danny for their moderation of the mem- Members Only Lounge. And thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for six years of music. Yeah. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for about three, two or three years of music. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't uh, know how long we've used this music. Oh, and we should thank our Lord and Savior. Oh, yes, Angela. of course. Yeah, Just, uh, she's still around. Throw that in there. Uh, and uh, and thank you, friends, for uh, for for being part of this. We re- we actually really do appreciate it. Bye.